Oh, shalom, Rastafari. Greetings, this is Wendem Yadin. This is Rasai Adonis, Tafari of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah Society and a member of the Rastafari Church of the Firstborn, Church of Christ in his kingly character. And here <clears throat> we're looking through some of the the art and the pics of um, the conquering lion, the tribe of Judah, Haile Selassie the first. Ethiopia. Um, and we're, we're enough meditations, meditations are coming to mind. And so we just decided, well, we're still looking for, see if we have, um, a pick or two. We might not be on this drive right here, but we do have some, um, exhibits that are ready. So, just be patient with me, brothers and sisters. This, um, this vlog, um, this, uh, study, this lecture and presentation is a work in progress, a labor of Jah love in progress. And we want to title it the Shroud of Turin and Nigu Selassie or the Shroud of Turin and Hila Selassie, the the comparisons and some of our observations. And I give thanks to I and I Wendemoch and Hitoch and the Natoch of the Rastafari Church of the Firstborn and co-laborers in the Society of His Majesty, the Lion of Judah, um, for their contributions to this as well. Some of the graphic and the art that we've seen on the RTG, Rastafari Groundation. And we haven't had an opportunity um, due to um, due to time, you know. What I mean, um, already I look and it's it's already the the fifth day, you know, in um, the so-called week. You know, we're already in the Thursday of this particular week, and looking forward to the Torah portion also coming up. So I'm looking for one other picture of His Majesty. His Majesty's. Um, his, his, his features, his milk, um, is very enigmatic. Um, the, the look of his majesty, the features of his majesty are very, very enigmatic. And if, and if you have, um, spent any time looking at various different pictures, as many of I and I as Rastafari have done, you will notice that, um, there's something different in every picture, yet something the same. It's, it's very cryptic, very enigmatic. And I think that as we study the shroud, the shroud of Torin, and I want to just make a couple disclaimers right at the outset that I was never really a, a so-called believer in the shroud of Torin, whether it was legitimate or not legitimate. I was very interested in the studies and and in all that was said concerning the Shroud of Turin. So when I had the time and an opportunity, I did uh, watch a lot of the different programs. Some of them were religious programs. I think a few were on History Channel or they were history-like uh, programs which um, questioned the authenticity or legitimacy of the Shroud of Turin. And although there were some naysayers um, concerning the Shroud of Turin, it seems as though more proof has come out over time that the Shroud has uh, a lot of um, legitimacy. In other words, there's, there's a lot of points that can be made to prove that the Shroud of Turin is... Um, is legitimate, you know, and these are not just Christian people or Catholics or whatever groups that might have some religious vested interests. So in, in stating that, um, I want to state that our doing this particular video is not because we, um, we believe in the Shroud of Turin, um, necessarily or have been believers in the Shroud of Turin. In fact, we basically dismissed it as, as many people do dismiss um, the Shroud of Turin. Now, 
That does not mean that there's not a lot of um, um, counterfeit or how can I say there's a it's not saying that there's not a lot of dubiousness that surrounds the shroud. In fact, I remember looking at a carbon dating um, of the shroud and um, I think someone had tried to paint over a part of the shroud. Um, a couple of centuries ago and they had cut off a piece of that and he went to date it and people say, ah, it's not from the time of, of Jesus, of Yeshua. It's actually from a later, you know, medieval Christian time and everything until, you know, more studies and research went and said that, well, the portion of the shroud that they were allowed to cut off and to carbon date actually was painted over and those paints or whatever from that time. But then others went to study the shroud and went even deeper into their um, search, research and investigation. And they found certain, certain very interesting correspondence. So we have, we have some of these vids and have to really organize our video library and look forward to, you know, brothers and sisters who might, be particularly um, inclined to such work um, to really co-labor with I and I because um, it, it's it's much. I mean, the harvest is the harvest is is ready, but the laborers are few. And we pray to Adonai about to send more laborers into his vineyard and also to to thank him for the I and you all who have become I and I co-laborers in the vineyard of his majesty, whether far or whether near. Amen. Amen. Xavier Mesken, Abroist and So let's go a little bit further in this um I might call this like a not the first part. As as many of you know, we've touched on this um subject matter. And this still right here that you see that we have named Hala Selassie I uh, Christ Shroud of Torin where you see um, a transition, um, a superimpose. Actually, the shroud was superimposed over this particular um, picture um, of his imperial majesty. So nothing was changed. It wasn't, you know, no type of Photoshop kind of tricks, you know, to make believe. I think we was doing some of our... Um, more classic, as some of the brothers Wonder Moch call them, the classic uh, vids, um, the slideshow presentations. And it was doing, you know, one of those particular slideshow presentations that in thinking, well, what we're going to use at this point while we was in the studio editing it. And we had a picture of His Majesty, as you see that particular picture of His Imperial Majesty. And we have a little larger view of it. Let's... um. Let's go over here so you can see some of this right here. We might have to restart the computer because we was doing some work on it, outputting some videos and everything. And sometimes the machine starts to, you know, slow down or whatnot like that. And it works best after restart, rebooting. It's been on for a little while and it's uh, currently kind of hot or humid um, in... Um, New York, New York, and, and Babylon, Babylon, and Babylon City, this, the city that's the capital of this, uh, empire, you know, Babylon is, America's an empire. So it's so very interesting. You think it was a republic, but anyway, um, this right here is also very interesting, you know, um, that is a compliment for Hadis Selassie speech on spirituality. And we was going to use this just to recall the basic biblical theme that God, that Yahweh had given Yeshua. Yeshua is, is, is the lamb, like the father and the son is one, yet the father is not the son and the son is not the father, but in spirit and in truth. Right, they are one. You know, and it's not to get into the theological, even though the theological, the 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 right, the correct theology, because there's a lot of Christian theologies 
which are incorrect biblically, scripturally, as well as much of their history and, and racially as well. You know, and there's also a point that we have been making concerning the ethnicity of our Lord and Savior, right? And his humanity, according to the right faith, the Tawahedo faith, um, the so-called Orthodox faith, his humanity is not separated, is not separate from his divinity, right? So that's, that's, that's a key, a very, very key point as well. Now, while we wait for, I think this computer is a little slow because we had made a movement, but it's, it might be a little stuck right now. We'll continue just to reason a little bit more on some of the meditations leading in to this particular study here. So I wanted to say that concerning the Shroud of Torin, we were not a, um, we were not a proponent of the Shroud of Torin previously. And even right now, we're not a proponent of the Shroud of Torin. However, because previous to this revelation, I mean, what we're, what we're seeking to, um, go into right here is, I think a very important revelation that was blessed to us in the process of being in the vineyard and being in the, in, in the labor of the King of Kings in Christ that when we recognize that, wait, and, and this is when we was doing this particular vid and we give thanks. I'm not too sure right now. I don't want to call off, um, one brother in when it might have been another brother in who was responsible for this particular um, presentation right here. I think I know, but I don't want to say because there's a few of the brothers that, that are, you know, doing certain works. And as I often say, or I've begun to say more often, that's better. I've begun to say more often that Christ's minds think alike, right? Because this is what I kind of saw in my mind's eye. So when I and I went and when I and I beloved was able to present this on the RTG, the Rastafari Ground Nation, I'm like, ah, because I, I sought to do it within the video. And all I did within the video was just superimpose the Shroud of Torin, right? Superimpose the Shroud of Torin over a picture of the face of his majesty. And as it would say, voila, you know what I mean? Behold, you know, and I said, wait, I started to look at some of the, um, what, what they call this when they study like the features and, and these sort of things, like the, like the points, the, you know, the correspondence of points. It was so very interesting. In fact, after I had did it and looked at the video, I said, wait, hold on for a moment. This is fitting. Um, I'm not going to say too well, but very well. It's actually just, it's matching. It's a perfect match. Now, like I said previously, his majesty's look, his, his features, we say Bamarinya, um, or, or like the form or one's, one's image, so to speak, his milk. And that's interesting, milk, you know, milk. His, his, his milk, the milk of Melchizedek, his milk is very, very enigmatic. And if you look at a series of pictures, you will see how certain features come out. And this is where some people try to say that, well, his majesty, they try to say, well, he's not really Ethiopian. He's not really black, you know, um, because they have been given um, stereotypical, stereotypical and a racist view of black people, of African people, and in particular of Ethiopian Hebrew people at home and abroad, you know, the stereotypes of what black people look like, you know what I mean? Whether what their complexion look like or what their features look like as well. So when we look at the Shroud of Torin, we just take a look at the Shroud of Torin from this Western um, retrograde sort of a Christianity perspective, this racism that we have been subjected to in our ancestors before for nearly four to 500 intensive, you know, intensive years, we would look at the Shroud of Turin and we would dismiss it. We would say, oh, no, that's 
that must be a white guy, you know, and I must admit, I've, I've, I've kind of said that I've said that some of my other brothers and sisters, you know, when we was talking, what do you think? Do you think the Shroud of Turin is real or not? And we've gotten to some real interesting discussions about it, you know, in fact, listing um, the points for and the points against. Right. And those who feel that, yes, it's real. Well, for what points, you know, and then with what are the what what are what's your argument based on? What's the points of your argument? You know, and those who think it's not. What are the points of your argument? And I've already went through that before I even did this particular vid some a year or two or so ago where we put the Shroud of Turin image over the image of His Imperial Majesty, and we had it fade, you know, we had it basically a slow fade. And when we saw it, especially at, let's get this over here. Um, let's get a pointer if we can. I think we left our pointer in the other room. Well, we'll just use I and I, I and I yard, I and I finger right here. But especially when you start to see the transition over here, the face, and maybe the video here doesn't bring out, we might have to zoom in, and you start to look at the features, the brow, the nose, right? Even the particular um, nuances of the nose, of the mouth, the mouth lines up, the mustache lines up, the beard lines up. There's only one thing that one could say is different about the two. And that is the style of hair. In the picture of Kadamawi Haile Selassie, he is wearing a afro, right? And in the Shroud of Turin, it's very obvious that the image is wearing locks, has locks, like the Bahitawi of Ethiopia. So locks, we also get to know, are known and indigenous to the people of Ethiopia, especially of the Davidic and the Solomonic dynasty. So that's another correspondence right there. As well, so we started to see how the features started to line up. Even, in fact, in this one right here, it's even very clear, right? How the features lined up, and this is this is one picture, right? This is this is one picture, and then we found another picture. I think his Matthew turns his head, so it's not straight on, as this particular picture is straight on. But we're going to get into some more of the details of this, because I think this is a very important and somewhat unsung revelation right here. And we don't seek to take credit, but we um, have credit, in the words, faith, right, in the King of Kings and his Christ and this evidence right here, especially since the most um, recent um videos and series of videos some of the earlier videos so so some doubt on the shroud of Torah. i think the pope and the catholics they were trying to do something whatnot so forth and so on so there was some doubt from the media and ones and ones but some of the later um videos about the authenticity of the shroud right i mean they can't say for sure that it is yeshua yet from all the evidence of it it only points, it's like the fingerprints, you know, only points, you know, to one man. They don't have that man before them that they can compare with the evidence, but from the dating of it, from the particular type of cloth. And then also, they are not sure how the image was made. Some speculated that the image was painted on. Then they really got to find out that no, it's not. And because of a lot of the more modern technology as, as, um, knowledge is increasing, Daniel's prophecy, they shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase as knowledge is increasing and man gets to understand the material kind of universe and the immaterial sciences and laws. They begin to recognize that 
this image could have been produced, but only produced by a high intense energy that they only know really comes, you know, is able to be generated by technology. You know what I mean? So when we read the scriptures about how Christ was resurrected from the dead, how the father raised the son from the dead, you know what I mean? It, it, it's speculated that um, when like all of his atoms and everything just sparked and fired and that super melanin just shot out and projected this image in the same way, in other words, the technology is or, 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 the, or the science of it, the knowledge of it is based on what we know of photography, right? Yet it has been proven that this image could not be produced by modern photo photographic methods. I mean, they can do something that kind of, you know, a cheesy kind of a similarity, you know, just to show that this technology must have been used. So if this is a so-called medieval fraud, as some people speculate, then one has to ask, well, um, who had such technology in the Middle Ages? Because it's clear that they did not have that sort of technology, at least it was not known, where some assume that this shroud was produced. But then other facts have also showed that, you know, the particular type of even um, microsco uh, microscopic um, um, particles um, on there really points to certain types of species of um, of, 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 of flowers, botany, and, 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 and and nat natural, I, I, I don't want to say, um, you know, certain fibers and plants, you know, are kind of found, some of them, which are unique. Many of them are unique to certain parts of the world. So sometimes they can, you know, relocate where a garment might have been produced because in that country or in that land, there are certain type of um, micro, uh, uh, mi micro, microscopic, that's the word right there, microscopic um, traces of certain naturally occurring elements that are particular, peculiar, and unique more so to one part of the world than to another part of the world. So, um, that's another point. Now, the whole carbon dating thing, you know, it, 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 it works, but it works in a very limited and a very controlled sense. And many who have tried to carbon date, um, the shroud have come up with various different dates because the carbon dating, the whole science of it is very, very dubious and is not a reliable or accurate um, dating of, um, certain things. I think it is for certain type of things, but now they've really narrowed it down, you know, to what things and what period of time. But when they tell you, well, something was carbon dated from millions of years ago, that's usually, it, it might've been sincerely believed when ones did not know any better, but now that, you know, later scientists and studies and technology has improved so they can really do um, studies that they could not do years ago has proven that, well, that's not so. All right. All right. So with that being said, as we, you know, as we uh, start this up here again, and let's see if we can go into this. What we might do is take a pause for the cause and come for part, another part of this or another um, episode or installation in this uh, series. Because there's also some additional um, video that we were able to acquire. And actually, I think this video um, was played on Fox some years ago, right? on Fox, uh, Fox TV cable station some years ago. What they did, I think this, they did this in the Vatican or Rome, Italy, is that they were able to take the, the shroud, 
you know, and all the technical details off of the shroud. I get things feed it into a computer, something like that, and we're able to reproduce a bronze, um, lifelike, um, um, bronze uh, statue or image and reclining, like laying down of what and how big, you know, the person who is featured on the shroud would be. So this is an, uh, another vid that we have. Um, and um, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think we have been able as of yet to put that particular video out there. And from my research, I tried to find it out there on the Internet or Fox, and it, um, I wasn't able to locate it. So I think very few people, I think it only played like once, you know, once. And it's kind of a rough cut that we had. I think we had TiVo then. So we was already on the channel at that time. And we was able to, you know, um, rewind it and then put it onto videotape. And of course, watch it, pause it, and just, you know, just just be in, in, in wonder and in awe and said, what? Because when you get to see this image, I think I did have a still of it. Some who have gone to the Vatican or have gone on their tours, they have seen this as somewhere there where it's a lifelike bronze um, statue and uh, reclining, laying down that was made um, like I think with computer, you know, uh, from the image, right, that is found on the shroud. And so what they find is that this shroud of Turin is not a piece of art like somebody drew it, you know, or that some ones and ones who are into some occult scientific uh, craft produced it. Why? Because they have now been able to reproduce this. Uh, remember, the shroud is like two dimensional. You see what I'm saying? And um, to take a two dimensional image, right, and reproduce it to the form of what the three dimensional, say, person that was wrapped in this two dimensional cloth, right, would produce, you know, when you have the right science and technology, an actual image of what that person, you know, or, or the shape or whatnot like that. If it was drawn on there or if it was produced by, you know, the figment of somebody's imagination, you know what I mean? Like if I draw a person full size and everything and you feed it into the computer, it will not be able to give you accurate because though you it'll look good to your eye, the computer will be able to judge the lights and dark to give the depth to it that only a living or an actual three-dimensional person, a real person, could produce. So it's been proven that this shroud is of an actual human being. And the, the Catholics, in, I think in the Vatican or Vatican City, um, they actually have a three-dimensional bronze um um, image, right? And it's interesting because if this is Christ, right, the, the image that is on the shroud, then that means that Christ, right, would have been, <laughs> and this is what's kind of interesting, almost the physical size of a small in stature man. And when we saw the, you know, what the three dimensional of this, uh, two dimensional look like, you will say, that's Hyla Selassie with dreadlocks. And that's what was, that was, was, was I would say, was the, 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 <laughs> um, I, I, I don't want to use no cl cliche. That was the truth. That was a revelation. You know what I mean? That was a Cain and our main. That was a, um, a wool and our main. That was a yay and an amen. Right. So with that being said, just to give a little bit of, a, um, you know, a little bit of a, a context to where we want to go with this. So it is based on this particular image right here. Right. It was based on this particular image right here. 
that we were able to, um, let's see if we, uh, let's see, here we go. Okay. Um, all right. Now you can see the features right there as well. All right. If you look, you can see the features there as well. Now, of course, His Majesty, um, the crown, his head is at an angle. You know what I mean? Now, what's interesting with the computer, you know, in a computer that's able to do that sort of math, you can take this particular image and rotate it, right? Rotate it until it's front on. So what we had to do, since we didn't have that sort of um, technology, right? Since we didn't have that sort of technology, let's keep that like that and go through our windows right here. We didn't have that sort of technology. Um, we produced a video in which we just superimpose. Right? All that we did was superimpose one image over the next image and then step by step by step transition the image and here's what you see within these um from these five these five frames but the key frames are right here these are the key frames let's see if we can zoom in so you can so you can see this for yourself right here all right now this was very interesting. Even this one right here in the transition. Right? I mean, everything, just about everything matched. And the only other difference is the fact that His Majesty has a shirt here and a tie and wearing a jacket right there. You know? But even right here, if you look at this particular view right here. So the difference is the hairstyle. That's the only difference. Right? And it's very easy to account for that because, as we said before, the Bahitawi, right, um, the Bahitawi, the monks, we can say, of Ethiopia, the Christ-like monks of Ethiopia, they have locks, right? And when they, before they become monks or before they take on that um, um, Bahitawi net, they have afros because they are afro, you know, afro shemitic people. So they have afros. But the, it's the features, it's the lining up of the features, even to the, the, the crease right here, like the cheeks, the cheeks and the lines in the cheeks, right? And even there's a line here that you'll find on one of the pictures that come through on, on the shroud down here as well. Okay, so we want to get into a little bit more on the shroud and just to remind ones and ones that this is a very important revelation right here, you know, because see, racism makes us believe that, well, this must be a white guy. See, that's what, that's, that's what racism makes us believe, that this right here must be a white guy. In fact, those brothers and sisters who know which videos, since we have produced, um, um, several, maybe a hundred videos by now. Of course, we can find it, you know, take maybe a moment, but you might have that video more in mind because you might have been studying that video more recently. Which videos, if ones can find which videos that we feature this transition? I remember first we just had it at the end of a vid, but then it was so profound, you know, and I had to look at it again. And what I actually did was take two pictures again, you know, and did it again. And I saw that once you basically align, you know, like say the eyebrows and the nose, everything else lines up, even down to the particulars, right, of the beard. Now, of course, another question can be, well, so what? Well, for those who have a so what attitude, perhaps this is not for you. But for us, right, this is another powerful um, a revelation, right, that, that confirms and affirms the other signs of this 
prophetic and this special time. And blessed be the King of Kings in the name of Jesus Christos, Getachin Jesus Christos, Adonenu Yeshua HaMushiach. More to come, brothers and sisters. Stay tuned, Yah willing. This is Wendem Yadin reporting for the line of the Tribe of Judah Society of His Majesty and for the Rastafari Church of the Firstborn. Shalom.